Hello friend, welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. This is new customer, new vehicle, 2000 Toyota Tundra with 177,000 miles on the odometer. So, the owner said this is our newest vehicle, we have her only for one year, we already spent a bunch of money. Have we did tow or do tow something with it. I forgot what it was. 177,000 miles on the odometer. You are experts. This 2UZFE, you know what it is. It's a non DVTI. We said 177,000 miles and timing belt was done by Ace in parts. 156 and that's definitely completely up to date the vehicle came for a check engine line but the owner also said when i started up in the morning i hear the ticking i will say i hear ticking from the engine so by the way she said huh well you will look around thank you for that the engine oil maybe a little bit behind well look at this it says 162834 we have 167 714 that's almost 5000 miles due i will be definitely pulling out that dipstick and checking that out if either somebody forgot to update the sticker or they didn't change the oil already passed 5,000 miles we will see so she's in I connected the scanner for the engine the simple one and we have zero one of zero two codes the first one is P0155 which is the O2 sensor meaning oxygen sensor heater circuit on bank 2 sensor 1 if we scroll this is the number 1 if we scroll through it and let's go and look oh 0202 so the code is here twice O2 heater circuit bank 2 sensor 1 we have clear direction from the computer it says that Oxygen sensor heater circuit is basically interrupted. It's burned. This is always what happened and that needs to be replaced 99.9% .9 of these. This is what it means For this engine V8 4.7 liter coat 2U ZFE what it means Bank 2 Bank 1 Cylinders two four six eight cylinders one three five seven so that oxygen sensor o2 sensor as the scanner called it it's at bank two and sensor one so it will be the first one it will be the upstream sensor before the catalytic converter not the downstream which is past the catalytic converter so that's where you focus your uh, diagnosis and measurements if that heater circuit is burnt on that sensor she was here a long time enough sitting uh, for that engine oil check i want to see if it's bad if it's really 5000 miles past uh, we don't have the burn stuff on the dipstick, that's good. Let's see what's up here. Did somebody replace it recently and they forgot to change the sticker? No, it's brown. It's definitely dirty, so she needs engine oil and filter change. That's for sure. Now, when you talk to the people uh, for the new vehicle, you want to know as much as possible. I asked a lot of questions. 
and she said they in the last year spent a bunch of money on this truck when they bought her right after they spent a bunch of money i'm looking here and they most likely did this looks my friend like aftermarket coils we said there was the timing belt done and that's just what is visual right now so we can see that most likely somebody change the spark plugs and coils i have put numbers for myself on them so i don't mix them up when i remove the coils here you can see all the coils and the spark plugs removed it's a very sad realization that whoever did this job bought these most hardcore cheapest ignition coils it didn't it doesn't even have a brand on them and the most disgusting auto light spark plugs this is very sad to find these things in the engine unbelievable i was afraid that number five will be having blow by but there's no visible blow by the spark plug was torqued or holding inside of the spark plug tube correctly i will say they were all four of them on a loose side but they were definitely not loose to cause any blow by in the spark plug so this is great news for the owner of the tundra this is when it happens on this side one of the spark plugs the thread will be damaged the spark plug will start moving up out of the head and there will be visible blow by on the spark plug on the coil and there will be that ticking clicking sound present there we can see how easy it is to get to the spark plugs and the coils on both sides so you can believe me that I will put it in my recommendations to replace these spark plugs with Denzel K20RU. This is what belongs in 2000 Tundra 2 ZFE. So we said that the bank 2 is on the passenger side, correct? So if we look on the exhaust system. Hopefully you can see that one sensor and the wiring harness coming to the connector over there. That will be bank 2 sensor 1. And that's what the scanner was telling us that that should be looked at. Here will be bank 2 sensor 2, B2S2. So we have to disconnect that one. The connector is pretty hard to get there, but I will do it off the camera and we will do our measurements to see if that heat circuit is really burnt or not. Now I start understanding why they said that they spent a bunch of money when they bought her a year ago. There's completely new Riemann rack and pinion. Here you can see it disconnected and we have a space here to measure it and what we've got we have a black wire gray wire and two white wires now let's go carefully observe the connector to that sensor so if you see the details if you keep this connector this way up where the clicking this is the top where it engages so if you keep it on the top there are four pins, two on the top, two on the bottom, to check the resistance of this O2 sensor heater. I have to touch these upper pins, the one on the left, on the right, and there should be resistance of between 11 and 16 ohms at 68 Fahrenheit which is 20 uh, degrees Celsius. So on my multimeter, this is volts and this is the ohms, the resistance. Let's put the light there for you. You always recheck that it's perfectly in zeros. 
Now I go and will do what I just said to you. And you can watch with me. You will see it first actually. So it's basically, in our case, it's a two white. On, on this generation, on this model, it's a two white wires coming into this connector. Normally the heater circuit on later on Toyota, it's two black ones. Here it's the opposite. So whatever. Let's touch it. Now, you might say, oh, it's awesome because it says 8.5 or 8.6, so it's colder today, so maybe it's correct. Well, I don't know if you see on the right top corner, it actually says mega ohms. It's not in the ohms. This is fully, fully automatic reader and it was saying mega ohms there, so that means that circuit is interrupted or it's just going to blow and it has to be replaced. It's a typical situation. Hopefully I said it 99.9% .9 of time the sensor is at fault and you are not starting your diagnosis at the ECU which is in the car. You always go this way that saves you time. If you read the Toyota repair manuals they start the other way, but uh, at the computer, but in the reality you do the opposite. I don't think I will be able to show you removal, because this is a hard spot to even put my hands there. I can show you the tool, it's a snap-on SWR2, it's a special socket, which goes around these, and if you play with it for a while, they're able to position it and I can show you how I got it loose. You can see the tool up there, the black part, even with this short breaker bar 3 8. We are in California, this was not rusted and stuck there, the flange. That will be a nightmare to work around it, but I got lucky, even this short breaker bar, was. I was able to loosen it and they will, now I will just unscrew it. You can hear it, the fret in the exhaust, there is so much heat, it's always issue, that's why the new part you will see, it's coming with already pre-installed anti-seize on the fret. Look at it, oh yeah, that's definitely visibly, I hope you can see it, that's an old sensor. There was a choice of the parts, I could have bought Bosch or Denso price was approximately the same. Guess what I got? You know me very well, you are not surprised. Denso comes with Toyotas, so when I have uh, any chance to replace anything on it, I go OEM supplier Denso. Here is the new part. Uh, the wiring harness should be the same length. You always check, you check the connector, right? This is what we were saying, where the clip is. It was the two top wires. As you can see, the replacement part, it's exactly what I told you. Two black wires, not two whites. It's normally on the recent supplied parts. Two black is the heater, blue and white are the signal. So. Here is the cap, because that cap is protecting a layer of the anti-seize and it's keeping it from being removed in the box, in the packaging. So I have removed that plastic, hopefully you can see that anti-seize, there is a crush washer. And how can I get there and not kick down this? tripod. I torqued it down without you, sorry, but there's no space for me and you. I heard a nice satisfactory click and hopefully you can see where it is connected back to the wiring harness connector. So she got a new engine oil and filter. She has new spark plugs, all of them were replaced with correct ones 
and not that cheap auto light. Let's go and see if the code will come back. I erased it in the beginning. If the problem will be still there, the code will come when the heater wire on the auto sensor is burned, the code comes back pretty quickly. We have zeros, the monitors flashing, they have to relearn. And so far no check engine light coming back. I love the pressure, there was oil due, 5000 miles it was due, it was not enough, it was close to the bottom. On, on the lower part. Now look at it. Oil pressure. Fantastic. Obviously it's cold. So the pressure is higher than when it will warm up. But they have another 5000 miles to go. The lady reminder sticker. And as you can see nothing is coming back. Obviously you are faithful, you know we fixed the problem. I'm not done, I will still go for a test drive with this vehicle. Like five, ten minutes and only after that I will write the paperwork and call the customer that she's ready for them. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope many of you will find it helpful in the future. If you do, give it a thumb up and stay tuned. I have way more coming your way soon. Thank you for watching and have a great day, my friend.